Hi, this is Brooks, and this is part two of my simple calculator tutorial for App Inventor 2. In part one, we built the user interface. In this part, we will work in the blocks editor. It's always a good idea before you start coding to think about the problem you're trying to solve and figure out what you'll need to solve it. In this case, we know the user will be entering a number, an operator, and then a second number, and we'll perform an operation using those three values. We'll need to store those values in memory, so we'll need three variables. I'm calling mine current, previous, and operator. You can call yours whatever makes sense to you. For current, we'll set an initial value of zero. We find the numeric block in the math section. We change the name from the default name to current. We then do the same thing, but this time change the name to previous. We then make a third variable, this time with an initial empty text value from the text section. We'll name this one operator. So our three variables are now initialized to zero, zero, and an empty string. Now let's think about what happens when the user hits a number button. For example, the number one button. We choose when button one dot click from the button one menu. Now we need to add some actions. Firstly, we want to assign the value one to our current variable. To do this, we choose the set to block from the variables menu. We choose global current from the blocks drop down menu. Now we choose button one dot text from the button one menu and drag it into the set global current to block. This assigns the text of button one, which in this case is just the number one, to the variable current. Now we want to show that number on our display. So we choose set label one dot text from the label one menu and drag the get block from the variables menu into the set label one text block. We choose global current from the drop down menu. So this looks pretty good so far, but if you take a minute to think about what happens, you'll see that this isn't right, not yet. To see why, let's trace through what happens to the data as we continue. When a user clicks button one, the text value of button one is assigned to the variable named current. When the user then clicks button two, which would be set up the same way as button one, the user is expecting the number 12. But the button as we have it set up now would simply replace the one stored in current with the text value of button two. So how do we set this up so that clicking button one and then clicking button two stores the value 12 instead of just two? The trick to this is to think about what happens to the numbers. If the user wants to enter 25, they click two and then click five. What happens to the two in 25? It gets multiplied by 10 to become 20 and then added to the five. If the user then clicks eight, the two and the five both get multiplied by 10. The two, which became 20, now becomes 200. The five becomes 50 and they get added to the eight to make 258. So we need to recreate this with code. When a user clicks on a number button, we need to take the value and the variable named current, multiply it by 10, and then add it to the value of the clicked button. We then store this new value into the variable named current, overriding the old value. We need to modify the set global current to block. First, we remove the button one dot text and set it aside. We then drag the addition block from the math section and then drag a multiplication block from the math section into the first open slot of the addition block. We need another set global current block. As a shortcut, we can highlight this one and copy it using Control C or Apple C if you're on a Mac and then paste it with Control V. We place our new set global current block into the first open slot of the multiplication block. We drag a number block from the mass section into the next open slot and change its value to 10. 
We then drag the button one dot text block into the final open slot. Now we fixed it. When the user clicks two, then five, then eight, the value of current will be 258. We'll need to do this for every number zero through nine. This is easy enough to do. You can highlight a series of blocks and copy and paste them. Then just change all the references from button one to the number you want. Now that you see a few of these side by side, note that there's a lot of repeated code here. This is a good opportunity to introduce the concept of procedures. Instead of just repeating this code over and over again for each number block, we can write it once inside of a procedure and then just call that procedure in each number block. Although it's not necessary to make a procedure, it will work just fine like this. A procedure simplifies the code and makes updating the code much easier. For example, if in the future we want to change this code, we'd only have to do it once instead of 10 times. To create the procedure, we choose the to procedure do block from the procedure section. We rename it something reasonable. I'll call mine number button click. This kind of procedure takes in a value as a parameter and does something with it. We start by dragging the blocks from our current button one click code to the procedure. Then under the procedures options, we'll add an input parameter. This acts like a variable that exists only inside of the procedure block and stores the value sent to it by whatever code is calling the procedure. In this case, it will be the text of the number button clicked. So I'll rename it from the default X to number text. Now we just replace button one text with the get number text block. To do this, just hover over the number text box for a bit. Now we're done with the procedure. To call the procedure, drag call number button click from the procedure section into the win button one click block. Then drag button one dot text from the button one section into the empty slot. This calls the procedure and sends the text value of the button as the input parameter. The procedure answers the call, takes the text value sent to it, and applies the code we wrote. Now that we have our number one button built, we just need to copy and paste it nine times and modify the values to reflect the button number for each one. With this, we've taken care of all the number buttons, and we'll wrap up this part of the tutorial. In the next part, we'll deal with the operator buttons, the equals button, and the reset button.